Do you remember the tune, Dave? Do you remember that tune, no, Dave? No. That term, I mean, it's about 15 years old. I don't know if Wilma would remember. Padme Sagaboy, Padme. Saga Boy. Definitely. Saga Boy, sure, sure, yeah. And remember that this is a tribute to Beryl McBurney and her anniversary of her work at Little Carrot Theatre. So this All is right. a very, very important Special session. Special tribute, yes. Mustn't forget Beryl and the work she has done. You are seeing Raoul Garib's Fantasy Island. And again, we get a Latin flavor. And the and the outfits of the men and um, the bolero type uh, westcott westcoats if, if like they can be called as such uh, the hats the straw hats of course pre painted uh, to match the the color of the the entire outfit and the arms and around the waist of the top fringe with gold. But the ladies with the baskets of fruit on their heads, a nice breezy costume, white do is a floral print. Uh, and she has to fan herself. The Saga boys are certainly not fanning her. <laughs> I don't know why, I mean. She looks very fanable. <laughs> <laughs> and Dave, you know, uh, some years ago chatting with Beryl, she said that one of her favorite colours was this violet because it represented so many things to her a kind of rebirth, a kind of carrying on, and several other thoughts. So, it is nice that this tribute to her should have had nuances of the color that she probably would have liked very much. And there's a camera of the blue hair section. It's Soka Disco. Soka well, Disco. Well, it's Disco. It's here with us. Yeah. Both of it, the soca and the disco, so why not a combination? The only pity is the only time you hear plenty of soca and a disco is at carnival time. Otherwise, it's, you know, rock, punk, punk. And, and it's this, interesting. That. It's your, your place, Dave, to, 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 you know, play the soca all year round. I'm just one person, love. Well. <laughs> Remember the, the tune that's so popular this year, All Night in the Fed. Yeah, no yeah, no so yeah, yeah, right. Would oh, you believe it's It's, it's a pity at the moment, you know, Dave, that the soca disco people haven't got music to soca to. Yeah, well, all we're hearing so far are the whistles. And a thump, thump think, in the background. Maybe I think some the drums. Band is, um, <laughs> that does not put a damp on their spirits. No, they've got their whistles and they are, they are jumping along. Memories of whatever tune was being played. I don't think anything can damp the spirits of a masquerader on this big stage on Carnival Tuesday. I don't think anything. Yeah, the type of combination you wouldn't normally find. It's quite unusual to find this combination of colors in the way in which they're put and the quantities in which they're put. However, I think it works. It does. And it works better when you see the crowd. The section. Yes. Rather than the individual. The, the, I don't know if, it's the, if it were the designer's uh, idea to soften the impact of these strong colors by putting a panel of gray. But if you look at the legs of some of the dancers, you see a little panel of gray. But something as vibrant as soca and disco, you would think that the colors would, you know, be more vibrant. Um, because it looks cool. Well, the disco would be lights and music and... Yes, because at discos there, the colored lights are keep flashing, right? Purple lights, green lights, blue lights. And there's one that makes you blind. Have you ever been to a disco, Ian? We have to talk to that gentleman <laughs> about this. 
I think we better ask Dave to talk to him because he's bigger than me. Uh, talk to who? Mr. Dukudre. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> But you didn't answer Pixie. Have you ever been to a disco? Yes, I have been. <laughs> I, I go very rare. Yes. I try well, not, not to frequent discos. Well, I don't go to dance, you know. I go to dig the scene kind of thing, you know. Oh. I will, at least I went to dig the scene several years. I think you'll probably be blinded and deaf by I'm the time you right. left. <laughs> That's the reason I stay away. <laughs> my eyesight and my air bells. All right, we move on now to the fan bearers. Lovely, powdery, feminine pink, a lot of pink in evidence with a touch of blue and then of course purple. The, the section leader is that masked woman, Rosemary Stone. She's got a gigantic costume. She's such a tiny person and hopefully we'll pick her up soon. But the rest of the section just looks absolutely gorgeous. Shades of Paris Wilma, fan dancers from Las Vegas or Paris. There she is, there's Rosemary. A real great masquerade. I don't think Rosemary has ever missed playing a character mask on Carnival. Not queen necessarily, but it must be a section leader or a big mask. And the viewers who have only just joined us, this is the band that won the Band of the Year title, 1982, Raul Garin. His portrayal for 83, Fantasy Island. And I'm trying to consult my notes to let you know his... Right, last year he won with something called The Sting. The Sting. And I think that was his year. first win. Right, it was. Well, the colors are as bright as he used in the sting last year. The people are as infectious as the stinging people of last year. So maybe he can just do it. We won't know until Thursday evening. And as the feather dancers move across the stage, quite a few personalities in there. I won't call their names. Those of you at home, look for them and you'll recognize them. They are moving off to allow a very strong section. Strong in the sense that we have to blink our eyes when we look at it against this evening sun. It's going to hit you in a few seconds. You actually need sunglasses. going to probably sweep away our cameraman any minute and there we are you can get a glimpse of it these are the firebirds and the main characters came on stage and they did a little dance darting backwards and forwards yes yesterday Chris told us that, that a character who led the band, not this one, but the one who is the section leader, is actually a dancer in his own right and he composed his own firebird dance. Right. Yeah, I was about to ask you, Ian, if you could recall some of the things Christopher Santos, the designer for this band, told you yesterday, so you can sort of regurgitate, as it were, mentally, for us today. The Firebird is a, is, at least I'm, I'm following Chris's words now, it represents a, a tremendous amount of heat being bird-like, bird -like kind of lightness and very, very strong in its own right. The birds themselves are fantasy birds from this fantasy island and in this utopia there is not only coolness but also very great heat and warmth which coexist side by side. When we see the section that follows this, we are going to be able to get the contrast between the heat of the firebirds and whatever it is 
is going to come next. And is it also a marvelous invention? I don't know if Wilmer's picked this up already. Each one of the headpieces has a sun visor attached to it. You can either pull it up or down. So that is marvelous as well. If you take off the headpiece, you take off the sun visor. But I'm thinking that they've used hats earlier on, now they're using sun visors. So you're really thinking of the masquerader. And following that strong section of heat, Dave, what, what, you remember what I said about All right. one coexisting with the other? The gazelles. A green gazelle. And look at the transparent headpiece. Now that is something new. Talking to Chris about this headpiece, it is uh, a known and accepted form of sculptural expression. In fact, there, have been, there, there has been a, a complete movement and there have been numbers of sculptured pieces that work with, uh, with airy areas like this. Wires or bits of material that surround space and allow the eyes to fill in the areas that are blank. You know, Christopher Santos is primarily an artist, a painter, and this excursion into three-dimensional sculpture is quite an interesting thought. But Ian, you are also an artist and a painter. Why have you never got involved in carnival or participated in design? Why sit here and talk when you could be there? Well, he was, he was, he was never <laughs> asked. That is not a fair never approached. <laughs> um, I prefer to teach. To teach rather and, than um, yes, show for off. Quite a number of years I've taught art to teachers, and the teachers that I managed to come across have gone out to different areas of Trinidad and Tobago, and it was very pleasurable for me, although I did not mention it, during the school's carnival to see numbers of these teachers. That's why you were talking about the bands. teachers like that. Now I understand. Anyway, we've gone back to another myth: the unicorn. And if it's not bad enough, a pink unicorn and the transparent headdresses, the one horn sticking out from the forehead with a hint of gold. But what a lovely pink. Dave, would you say it's eatable? No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I like pink food. Remember, the, the unicorn is a fantasy animal of good yes, luck. Yes, a myth. All right, right. With, with a, one, a single horn. But I'm seeing some of them without the horn. Either the female unicorn or what? <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyway, it certainly presents a beautiful picture and uh, it fits right in with the portrayal and of Fantasy Island. What that banner reads? It says Kariwak. Isn't that marvelous to combine the Caribs and the Arawaks? Yeah, anyway. And, and that thought, you know, Kariwak, I, I always thought that Trinbego, Pan Trinbego came up with a really great name yes, for this country. I think we should be known as Trinbegonians. <laughs> well, I'm There's Annette, Annette, my co-host on Dateline, Annette the Silver. Annette the Silver. And she's a unicorn today, she's not a presenter. Having a wheel of a time. <laughs> Another band that is sure to give the judges headaches. When yes, they're totaling yes, up yes. their points later on, we saw Lee Hyung do a magnificent job here on stage. In fact, the whole portrayal was magnificent. Now, last year's winner, Raul Garib, is... But then again, we saw Edmund's portrayal, which was magnificent, but it's been such a long time that one keeps, you know, forgetting. As, as you see more and newer bands coming on, you forget. And uh, the word is... That Mitchell is right behind Garib. I saw one of his members earlier on, and she told me this. 
what, I, what I particularly love about this band is that each time you look, something refreshing hits you. Yes. It is not a little shock. Yeah, it's not a succession of colors. It is not a succession of different, totally unrelated designs. What happens is, it's just a refreshing difference. And what I like about the section is the combination. As Dave says, the Arawaks were peace-loving people, the Caribs were warriors. And when you look at the costume, it's part vicious and part kind and cool. Some of the colors give you the impression of being soft. And then you get to the headpiece where you see the feathers of the warrior. exuberance in this band. Everybody seems to be so happy and pleased with themselves. Well, when you're a winner, Ian, it's yes. not hard to be exuberant. And when you're confident that you can pull it off again, as well, I'm sure this band is. Isn't this lovely? Look at that view. The flower people. <laughs> flower fantasy. And what colors again? Ian, you call these colors iridescent, is that it? Yes, some of them would be iridescent, some of them would be really, truthfully, fluorescent. Flo ah, fluorescent that's it. There. Iridescent would suggest a certain amount of sparkle. And a changeable sparkle. But is it the material or is it the color? Uh, what no, makes you can it have, look like this? The material would give you the feeling because in many cases, iridescent material uh, different to this that we are seeing would catch the light and refract it in different ways so that when an iridescent material catches the light it breaks it up into component rainbow colors this however is fluorescent but what about the flowers themselves are they paper or material is it a fabric these would be plastic and the paper he did say use plastic and paper You played in the Sting last year. You played in the Sting last year. How do you compare the Sting with the Fantasy Island? What do you think? It's it's a little difficult to say because when you're playing in a band, you don't you see. are you are really a part of the band but not a part of the band. You are playing in your section and you're really very it's it's a very individualistic experience. You're really into yourself and perhaps your immediate life. And in truth and in fact, you rarely see the whole impact of the band itself. So I was very, very surprised when we won. <laughs> but you'd probably meet a friend of another section and say, what band are you playing in? <laughs> that has happened to me before. I know how you feel. And, you know, I, I, I spoke to some people while they were working on a costume. I wouldn't um, mention the names. And I said, well, why are you putting this color? He said, well, because I've, man, I think I'll just put this color here. Now, it sounds lackadaisical, but in everybody there is an instinctive like or dislike for combinations of colors. And this kind of thing controls what you do. Practice makes perfect, is that it? To a certain extent, <laughs> and then a little bit more knowledge concerning what colors can go with what colors because of the qualities. Birds of the rainbow here would attempt to give us a vision in this utopian paradise fantasy island of all the colors of the rainbow coming together. And there you see a very good example of the colors of the rainbow, the refraction of light, breaking the, component, the, the white light into component parts and giving us this feeling. You know, Ian, as I looked at this, you know, I, I became rather lost in thought about Broadway productions, about Hollywood productions. Las Vegas. What <laughs> it would cost. To do that. To do this. And we take it so much for granted. You know, I might be harping on the same theme, but I think as our children grow up, we should emphasize what a very, very valuable contribution carnival is. But, uh, you know, it's but is it, it is an art, isn't it? Oh, yes. And I think that the North Americans or the Europeans, they should, they hear about it. But when they come, I can understand why they are so enthused 
when they actually see what carnival is all about. And then look at this, this is, these are fantasy birds. Of course, even though they have on headpieces, you can't really identify a bird. It's a yellow bird, a green bird, a blue bird, a red bird. So there we go, we have to rely on the designer's theme, his concept. You, you know it's a bird, although you can't pinpoint exactly what bird. And you know, if you, if you, if you witness, we go into some of the close-ups, the masqueraders themselves even contribute instinctively to the whole effect. They wear stockings to make their legs even smoother. They put sequins or glimmer, glittering dust on their legs, on their eyes. They paint their faces. They are well made up. And they have flesh-colored dance skins too, so they give the impression of being nude. And you know, days of, of, of long ago, you, you just used to wear your, your little dirty washikong in a sense, but everybody <laughs> is, is, is a it part. Is. The costume is total. Look at the braiding on that, that one. Yes, the eye um, makeup is so distinctive. Meticulously detailed. And you would think that after a day in the sunshine, it would have melted and run by now. Uh, just a point of interest, we're hearing Blue Boy's Rebecca again. I'm keeping a score, and this makes 12 times. I may have missed one or two, but this makes 12 times. I've I counted think we this should stop counting played. now, Dave. Well, I think yes. he's won. I, I'm <laughs> sure, I'm sure this is a road match. And this section, rags to riches coming on, and we were promised that we'd see all the rags. But what wonderful rags. <laughs> but the rags are really on the standards because all the costumes look so rich. The body suits. Uh, certainly, totally breeze, absorbing presentation. Well, this looks like an abstract painting. Areas like of color. One of my paintings. <laughs> you do abstract, Pixie? Yes, on my walls. Well, I, I do subtract. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> you need some lessons. No, well, I took lessons. Remember, Ian had a series on television. He had a series recently. on Community Dateline, how to paint a picture. No, I'm talking about a different series in the evening. I took his series <laughs> and I wound up painting Subtract. Subtract Art. And like yesterday, the elements have been extremely kind to us on Carnival Tuesday. Not a hint of rain for the entire day. Brilliant sunshine and cooling breezes here at the big yard. On the big stage of the Queen's Park Savannah in Carnival City 83. Raul Garib's presentation, Fantasy Island on stage. We've just missed some beautiful movements by the section leader in this band, the Harvesters. It's all green and purple. Fantastic movements. Every section leader has come on doing something a little different. You know, Dave, directly after this, I want to get hold of Garib and ask him the address of this island. <laughs> Are you going to do some painting over there? Round the savannah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And it's a bountiful harvest, it is. It's pineapples, fruits from grapes. the vine, grapes. Look at those colored spikes rising into the air. It really is a lovely view. You know, you can look at fantasy in so many different ways. And I think that Chris has opted, Chris Santos, that is, has opted to look at the fantasy in this movement upwards. Somebody else put out an individual about fantasy and daydreaming that took the buffon soft yes, cloud like yes. feel so many different aspects this of it can be thrust. seen and, and this is quite successful and even though he he describes it as an imaginary utopia perhaps we could take in a sense announcer's license and call it almost trinidad trinidad oh, no. being fantasy island because all these sections all these entities embody Trinidadian life, in a sense. It's and for topical. some, this is Fantasy Island. <laughs> well, at Carnival time it is, anyway. 
We may yet convince Wilma to stay with us, Davey. You don't have to convince me, I'm here. <laughs> no, I mean, don't go back to Washington. Look, look, there, there she is. And that is not rude. That is lovely. I think she must be a dancer. That is no fantasy. <laughs> Real life, on stage. Gorgeous you know lady. I'm, I'm being silent. It's deliberate. <laughs> I am awestruck. Dave, have you ever flown a mad bull? Um, I have. Yes, not my own. <laughs> I got a little, a little pull from somebody else's, you know. A chicky chong. Yeah, no. yeah, chicky chong. Oh, yeah. Ah, but a, a mad bull. Here is the kite fantasy. Right, right. You know, I've looked around and I don't think there's any other part of the world where they've got mad bulls flying. You've got Chinese kites, you've got English kites, you've got American kites, but the mad bull. I'm not sure I stand corrected on this, but I think this is indigenous. Well, I think they have to be made and not bought. I yes. think you have to get your glue, your little tissue paper and your cane and start from scratch. Yeah, kite paper, cookie. Uh, and your flower glue. Flower paste, right. <laughs> And, and of tail. course, <laughs> the tail. And the mad bulls always carry these long bits on the side that gives the snorting. Ian, do you remember how many masqueraders Christopher Santos said were in the band? About, six, six, about 1,600. It seems like more than that. I mean, they've been going now for the better part of half an hour. And too, Raul is, Raul's um, work is, is relatively new, are they? For about five years? Yeah, he hasn't been around that long. And last year he won Band of the Air for the first time. But, uh, wow. His use of color, his, his use of imagination. Something else. I am impressed by his use of colors. In this section, the repetition of shapes, uh, you know, has come over very strongly and has added to what otherwise could have been a very mundane production. It certainly didn't look like any of the kites I made as a child. Yeah. <laughs> and this space encounters. Again, that upward trend. Shows a, a certain amount of discipline on, the behalf, on behalf of the designer in that he has chosen a motive or a theme and the concept carried it right, right through, through as a, like a thread linking each section to one another. And I think the huge collars that actually extend from the waist right over above the shoulders and way above the head, they could be indicative of creatures, alien creatures. Because so often on television and in the movies, we see alien beings with this and kind of shape. Right, and they've got masks too. They've got... Right. Which, they're, which yeah. they're not wearing. But Ian, don't you find that these blue things thrusting up into the air um, gives more impact than the flags that we are accustomed to, that the banners of Congress? Very much so. Uh, they allow a certain intermingling that allow that gives movement, and the blue reminiscent of space, reminiscent of outside there, sky, quite strong. Well, it, it just tells us that the fantasy island is not of this world, <laughs> not of the earth anyway. Well, this is only one part of the utopia. And there we see <laughs> a quick shot of the many planes that have been flying around the savannah. Since from morning, we've been bombarded by helicopters yes, and planes. Yes. I'm sure everyone taking aerial shots of well, today's performance. I, I know that the police commissioner, Mr. Burroughs, he has an aerial survey going. He, he actually goes up in the helicopter every now and then to keep an eye on things down here. You know, like uh, crimes or getaway cars, you know, that kind of thing. Because we've really left the island open. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> Everybody's Thousands here. of people are away from their homes. And very often, they, uh, the felons choose the, these two days to do their dirty work. 
when people are out away from home. I think that this section here, coming back to Raul Garib's presentation, has created atmosphere, and very simply so. A band to be reckoned with by any standards. A band that is going to take some beating in the reckoning for Band of the Year 83. Fantasy Island, Raul Garib. And this section coming on stage, Palms at Sunset. And you know, Ian, that could be a really beautiful and entrancing sight. You know, let's say you, you see a couple of palm trees with the sunset as a backdrop. You know, as an artist, I, I'm sure you can picture this. It could be a, a very entrancing sight. Good. And I, I, I also like very much, and I think many masqueraders could follow this kind of lead in which you use not absolutely contrasting colors with each other, but colors that have some relationship to one another. Like if you have a blue and a green, let the green have components of that particular blue that you've used. Actually, oh. we saw that displayed to its fullest in um, Wayne Barclay's contribution to Stephen's band, although I'm not too sure how fair it is to talk about that with such an excellent presentation by Garib on stage at this time. Right, and the design of this palm, instead of being one semicircle, it's actually two parts of two semicircles, one smaller than the other, to sort of relieve the eye and take away the monotony of one kind of shape. And remember, it, this is palms at sunset, and when you see the palms cast a shadow because of the sunset, it usually has this sort of dimension to it. It's not a complete palm in a sense. It's, it, oh, it's the silhouettes, and I think this is being very, very effectively captured by this, this design. Carnival City, 83, Trinidad and Tobago. Fantasy Island. Raul Garib's presentation as the greatest show on earth is really underway.